Well, joining us now, the senior BJP leader, Shopun Das Gupta. Thanks very much, Mr. Das Gupta, for being with us. Now, the key part of what, uh, of what George Soros said, the Adani controversy will, and I quote, significantly weaken Modi's stranglehold on India's federal government and open the door to push for much-needed institutional reforms. I may be naive, but I expect a democratic revival in India. Uh, how would he respond to that? He, he expects this to, to result in some profound change in our democracy on the basis of, of this controversy with the Adanis. Well, Vishnu, the first thing we must notice that George Soros is not a mere political analyst. Had a political analyst written this, you could have said, you know, he may be right, he may be wrong, etc. But there is a baggage which George Soros carries. And George Soros is a person who uses his economic clout, who uses economic leverage to destabilize, to get to manipulate regimes, to have political, uh, to, uh, to manipulate political, uh, uh, manipulate politics. He's done that before. He's got a record of doing it in the United Kingdom. He's got a record in Hungary, his home, uh, the, the, the country where he was born in, where he's almost a persona non grata, where there's a sort of a national campaign against him. And he's now trying to do this in India. Now, why he singled out India for uh, such exceptional attention is a matter which he can answer. But the mere fact is that today George Soros announced two things. One is that what happened in as far as the Hindenburg report was not a pure innocent, you know, uh, analysis of a corporate body which may have been guilty of certain things. It was slightly more than that. It was linked very much to the political, uh, to the politics of India and what the implications of that would be on India. In other words, what they expected, I think that that's the subtext of it, is that it would lead to a profound economic destabilization of India, which in turn would have a cascading effect and have a political impact which would destabilize the Modi regime, weaken him and perhaps strengthen some other people who it was it's, it's going to strengthen so, is a matter of conjecture. So, which I so don't Shabada, let me ask you this. The other key question is that Soros says of Prime Minister Modi, he says the Prime Minister has to answer questions from foreign investors and Parliament on allegations of fraud and stock manipulation against Adani Group companies. Now, our opposition says this as well. But the question does remain, does the, should the Prime Minister not personally respond directly to the allegations? No. I don't think so. I don't think the Prime Minister should respond to what Mr. George Soros is going to say. The Prime Minister may or may not respond to what parliamentarians say. But certainly when what Mr. Soros says is not worthy of attention. What I think is very important is that the, the there are certain institutions in India which should respond, which should actually take up the matter of how uh, this uh, the whole Adani is, issue has played out. And I think SEBI is looking into it, RBI is looking into it, and I think the Supreme Court is also seized of the matter. So there are various institutions in India which are look, looking into this. Now, all of them are looking into it. Why? For the reason, because they feel that anything important like this, which could have a, a, which could have a impact on ordinary investors, on the confidence of India as a thing, needs attention. Okay. In other words, their intention is to how do we improve the system? If there are weaknesses in the system, how do we improve it? And how, how do we plug loopholes? The intention of Mr. Soros is not that. It is how do we how do I use this to destabilize the country? I don't so let's like talk Mr. a little Modi. bit more about I don't that. like Mr. Modi. He says he doesn't like Mr. Modi. So he would like to use this for that purpose. So several BJP leaders have said that there's a, a foreign conspiracy. Uh, I mean, going beyond Soros, um, you know, one that is targeting us. I think Mr. Javdekar, in fact, mentioned this as well. I think Smithy Rani alluded to that as well. Uh, you know, but there's this BBC controversy now, Soros as well. Earlier on, there was Greta Thunberg, Hindenburg now. How would you respond to those who say that, you know, it's far-fetched to sort of link all of these and say that they've all come together and are conspiring against India? Well, I would look, look at uh, I would look look upon all these different uh, expressions of uh, hatred towards Mr. Modi in a slightly different way. I think there is an ecosystem at work which finds Mr. Modi's politics absolutely repugnant, 
Now, that they may find it repugnant, they may dislike it, but the fact is Mr. Modi is an elected representative of India. He's won two elections. He is popular still in this country. And therefore, to, to go against the wishes, you, you can say, I don't like Mr. Modi, fair enough. You know, you, I mean, there are lots of people in India who say that. That's not the issue. The issue is, why do you want to interfere in the sovereign right of a people to choose its own government? Mm. And I think that this, in some senses, actually in, infringes on the sovereignty of India. And I think that sovereignty of India is under somewhat attack. And I think there is a belief in some quarters that if you hit India hard enough, India will somehow wilt. And I think that's the assumption on which some of these thing, things are made. And as far as the BBC is concerned, there is a, as I said, there is an ecosystem at work. And I think these are expressions, the different expressions of that ecosystem. I think George Soros represents the most extreme end of it. And the BBC or some other, other, other people might, the more, more sort of benign part of it. Shopanda, um, you know, the way India is responding, and we've seen a more uh, strident <coughs> foreign policy in recent uh, times, uh, you know, I mean, separate to this entire controversy, the, the way we've handled uh, the entire issue of Russian oil, our foreign minister has been very vociferous about where we stand, national interest first, etc., etc. Do you believe that India is now willing to take on, if not the BBC, then Soros over here, anybody who questions us directly on our democracy, our economy, our values and our government uh, on the basis of this newfound power, which is, which is based on our economic strength, the fifth largest economy, uh, the GDP growing when other nations aren't. Uh, and so we aren't necessarily brazening it out. We've, we are here and we've arrived, certainly economically. Is that the backbone that, upon which we, we raise our arguments? Well, I think you've got to look, look upon it in, in a sort of historical context. That, that this country has been kicked about. It's been spat on for a very, very long time. And it's been spat on partly because we, we've seen, our, and it, it's, we, we've been at the receiving end of all this, partly because there is a sense of weakness which accompanies in there. E economic vulnerability, poverty, weakness, etc., political, di uh, political disunity. Now that we've managed to overcome a lot of this, I think there is a cer certainly a short fuse as far as this is concerned. There is a reaction. And I think the belligerence with which Mr. Jai Shankar, for instance, spoke to many of those people who questioned the, uh, the in India's purchase of energy from Russia actually gave that we are putting our self-interest first. You people have put your self-interest at first. Very many times allow us the luxury of doing it. And please don't be condescending towards us. Right. I think it's that feeling that please do not be condescending towards us. And if this appears to be uh, an act of uber-nationalism, I think it's unfortunate that you should see it in that, that way. I think it's really an assertion that really don't treat India in the same way as you did in the past. So let's flip that it's argument. Slightly different India. Shabuta, Maybe let's... the expression of that is a bit uh, uh, forceful, but that's the end. At, at the end of the day, that's the story. Let's flip that argument around. Uh, and if I were to ask you, how would you respond then to those who say that our aggressive nationalism, uh, in other words, hitting up back at, at Soros, Hindenburg, the BBC, uh, Greta Thunberg earlier on, it, uh, that too in, in our G20 year in many of these cases shows us to be an insecure democracy. No, I don't think it shows us to be an in insecure democracy at all. I think we are a proud democracy. And I think we are a de 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 democracy, we, you, you could say we are a jealous democracy. You could say that. The fact that we actually do defend ourselves, we are very proud of what, what we have. Of course, there are shortcomings. Of course, there are shortcomings. We know that. But it's the manner in which you make these uh, criticisms, which, which is, which, which, which is uh, relevant in the, this space. I think the, I, I mean, why should Indians be squeamish about the fact that today our government or a very large section of the political establishment is hitting back 
at those who are treating India like a banana republic or one of those unfortunate third world countries which need to be uh, patronized, which need to be said, tut, tut, you know, you could do better, you know, like spoiled children and things. That, that's an attitude which may have been relevant 50 years ago, 100 years ago, but it's certainly not the case now. And I think it's right, it's only right that, that we uh, actually articulate our pride in a forceful sort of way. Maybe my, way, my method of articulation of that pride is slightly different from someone else's. Sure. But at the end of the day, that's what it means. Some people might say it a bit more forcefully than uh, I would do so. But, but, but it's the, in effect, it's the same thing. Shopin, that George Soros has supported, uh, as you know, the presidential campaigns of, uh, of, of many liberal Democrats, such as Obama, Hillary Clinton, uh, Biden as well. But uh, he's spoken against Xi Jinping. He's spoken out against Donald Trump. He's spoken uh, against uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan of, uh, of Turkey. So how would you respond then to those who equate Narendra Modi with the hardline style of leadership of a Trump, of an Erdogan, of a Xi, which someone like Soros criticizes. Is that our well, Prime Minister? Mr. Can, can Soros he be seen is in the habit of the same prison prism. Mr. Soros is in the habit of dividing the world into two categories. Those who whom he likes, those whom he dislikes. And those whom he likes, he will do everything for them. And those who he dislikes, he will do everything to destabilize them. Now, that might be a fantastic parlor game, but you know. In, in real life, if you use your considerable political and economic, your monetary clout to do so, you're bound to get a reaction. And that's, you forgot to mention what has happened as far as his attempt to destabilize Hungary, his, his native place, you know, and the response, the, the amount of money which was poured in to propping up the Hungarian opposition, which came a cropper because uh, Viktor Orban won with more than 50% of the votes, 50% of the popular vote. And part of it, I may assure you, was a direct reaction to uh, George Soros. Now, I, I, I personally feel that it's, it's astonishing. It's astonishing that Mr. Soros believes that he has the right to dictate what America should believe he has a right to dictate what, how the Europe, uh, Europeans should, should vote in the Brexit issue. He has a right to de decide whether to support the Indian National Congress and get his representative. And to yet here with, we are debating to, this. To march with and Rahul yet Gandhi. here we are debating this. You've had so many BJP leaders reacting. So everybody is giving him importance. No, well, it the, is. You see, Mr. Soros is an important. So he seems part. to have a right, because whether we like a, it or not. That right has been given is to important. him. important. I, I, can, I concede that Mr. Soros is not a complete paper tiger. All right. Mr. Okay. Soros has done a considerable amount of damage to various countries, and therefore, if we were to take him lightly, I think we would be guilty of underestimating a, a gravely potential a, a, a big threat, which could be a potential threat at present, but it could be. So don't underestimate George Soros. He's done. I mean, he's, he's got his credentials in, in, impeccable. I mean, he'll go down in history as a man who, who, without controlling a single state, has managed to manipulate things in a way. So, you know, full credit to him. But don't try it here, please. All right, Chopada, thanks. If you, if, you try it here, if you try it here, you will get a response. All right. You will Chopada, get a I need to wrap this up.